One of the big things that affects an organisation is where it is in the industry life cycle. Now, this is a very important concept that will affect some of the strategic analysis that you are able to do. Often, the examiner gives you lots of clues about where you might be in this life cycle. One of the biggest things that you may have to do is you may have to use numbers to identify where you actually are, particularly if you are given the market size of an industry. If you're given the market size of an industry, particularly over a period of time, if you're given it over three or four years, look to see, is it getting bigger quickly? Is it getting bigger slowly? Is it not doing anything at all? Is it remaining fairly static? Or is it starting to go down? Is it starting to decline? Because that will give you useful information when you're starting to analyse the entire industry. So the life cycle of an industry, basically an industry grows and then shrinks again. Now there are a number of distinct stages that it will go through. First of all, we have what's known as the introduction stage. Now at the introduction stage, people don't really know very much about the industry because it's pretty new, it's brand new. Um, I suppose an example of this would be that we are still probably in the introduction stage of electronic books. There are electronic book readers that are available. Amazon do one, uh, Sony do one, various other people do one, Apple do one. Um, but the idea is it's still very much in the introduction stage. So the entire industry, there aren't that many people doing it. It's all often seen as a niche. It means it might be something small that a company is doing. Or it might be that because there aren't that many customers, you're not necessarily going to make a lot of money from it. There may be a few competitors. As I say, for electronic books, as far as I'm aware, there aren't that many people doing them at the moment. You might even have one company doing it. However, probably the biggest issue that faces an industry at that stage is that customers might not really understand what the product is or they may not understand why they need one. So a lot of the marketing and a lot of the advertising that goes with an industry in the introduction stage is simply making people aware, isn't this product great? How did you ever live without it? Now, in the introduction stage, if we are worried about competition, there will only be a few competitors, potentially. What we want to do is we want to get customers to think of our product as quickly as we possibly can. In the growth stage, you can see that we start making reasonable profits. You are now getting to the stage where enough customers are buying the product, so it's actually paying for itself. Our costs will be covered, presumably because we're going to start getting economies of scale. So our fixed costs could be spread over enough units so that we can actually start making a little bit of money. However, because... Other people, other companies can now see that you are making money. They will think to themselves, why don't we do exactly the same thing? So there are more and more competitors who will start joining into that industry. Now, I can guarantee with any new technology, if it looks like it's going to be successful, within two or three years, the number of competitors will probably double if not treble, because people can see there is money to be made. Now, that is very important, because if you, are in, if you work for a company or you have a company in the exam that is in that stage, they may well be growing very quickly. It may be difficult to carry on growing as quickly because of these new competitors who will come in. Now, where will they come from? They may be completely new companies that have just been formed to do something, on the other hand, they may be coming from other industries. So it may be some kind of convergence that they are coming into our industries. It seems like a natural product for them to offer. At the mature stage, you have what is called a P 
period of consolidation. At the mature stage, it means the industry is not really getting any bigger. So we have gone from introduction, quite low sales, perhaps a fairly rapid growth, and then we get to the mature stage. People are still buying, but the number of people buying is not really going up. If you were to look at your turnover figure, if you were to look at the number of units that are being sold each year, it's not really increasing. Now, I think there is an argument that could be made to say that that's the stage that the mobile phone industry is in, particularly in the UK. So, introduction, mobile phones have been in the UK for about 20 years now. They're, um, they've been around for quite a long time. One of the interesting things, if you look at an old TV show or you look at an old film, you can almost tell, if it's been made in the last 20 years, you can almost tell when it was made by looking at what kind of phone people have got. So in the beginning, in the 80s, they were very, very large phones, almost the size of a small book. And of course, now they're absolutely tiny to the stage where you could never find one. So mature stage, consolidation. What that means is that the bigger companies start buying the smaller companies. There aren't really there aren't really enough customers to have 10 companies all fighting over them. So what will happen is maybe the big two or three will end up buying the smaller seven. So you go from 10 companies to perhaps only having three companies. So that's what we mean by period of consolidation. Weaker companies, ones that aren't really making a lot of money, might either sell themselves to a bigger company or perhaps we'll simply say it is not worth us being in this industry anymore. We will shut down our product and we will just go and do something else instead. In the decline stage of the industry, customers start buying different products. For whatever reason, they no longer want your product. So no doubt in, I have no idea, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, I don't know, people may not bother with mobile phones at all. There might be something else instead, which means they don't even need to carry a phone around with them. I don't know what it will be, but there might well be something. Um, with a lot of technology based items, they go through a fairly rapid introduction, growth, maturity, decline. So introduction, growth, maturity and decline. It could be five or ten years from beginning to end. It could be 20 years, it could be 30 years. But if you are a company and you are in an industry which is in decline, whatever you do, however good your strategy is, however good your product is, sales are going down and there is nothing that you can do about it. So you will need to think about doing something else, getting into a different industry. All of this means that as part of your corporate strategy, and remember corporate strategy means the industries that you are in, you should regularly review to decide are there industries that you want to exit from? Are there industries that are in maturity? Are there industries that are in decline? Whatever you do, you're not going to grow very much. Get out and do something else. Or do you want to enter into new industries? Are there new industries which are in the introduction stage or are in the growth stage that you want to move into instead? So, for example, what you could do is you could own a factory and you decide we are making something in that factory. The industry is in decline. Let's not use the factory to make that product anymore. We find an industry which is growing. Let's use the same factory, but we will produce a different product for a different industry in there. Now, that's an incredibly important point as far as corporate strategy is concerned.